Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to a new video for 1.1 reaction rate. Where in this video, what we're going to learn is actually determine the order of reaction involving a single reactant using initial rate method. Okay, so on your notes, we're going to page four. But then just to um, remind you again. Okay, so um, how to determine the order of reaction? Okay, order of reaction too is actually based upon our rate law. Rate law ni must be rate is equal to k. And then the concentration of our reactant raised to the sum power. Power ni is actually our order of reaction lah. Uh, the example on page 3 ni, from the rate law, it is given to you what is the order of reaction. Be it 0 ke, 1 ke, 2 ke. But then, um, for this question, we're going to determine, here it mentioned, the values of x and y can only be determined experimentally. So, from the value from the experiment, actually we can determine the Order of reaction. So now let's determine the order of reaction by initial rate method. So what is initial rate? Uh, so by initial rate too, is given in the table uh, in the experimental value. So for the equation, we have to write down the rate law. Rate is equal to K, which is a rate constant. Uh, and then the concentration of reactant raised to the sum power. Sum power too is the order of the reaction, which can be find out using the initial rate method. So let's look for, for question 1. A, determine the order of reaction. So before we determine the X and Y, we have to write down the rate law first. In this case, rate is equal to K, uh, concentration of NO, uh, bukan raised to the stoichiometry, raised to the power of X, and Cl2 raised to the power of Y. Again, it must be your unknown. Uh, it does not depend on our stoichiometry. So how to find out the order of the reaction? We're going to use out the initial rate. Okay, so how we're going to use it, we're going to divide the value. Okay, so first, I'm going to find out the order of reaction uh, with respect to NO first. So NO here, okay, so how we're going to find out, so to find uh, NO, what we're going to do is actually we're going to use the same concentration of our Cl2. So that when we, we divide it, we can cancel it out. Okay, so from information here, so we look here, Cl2 is the same as experiment 1 and experiment 3. So I'm going to divide it. Okay, so experiment 3 divided by experiment 1. Uh, actually, experiment 1 divided by experiment 3 pun boleh juga. Okay, so for experiment 3, what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to substitute all the values into our big law. Uh, so here lah, I'm going to substitute all the values. So for experiment 3, the uh, initial rate is 9.08 exponent negative 5 equal to K, concentration of uh, and O to the power of X, concentration of Cl2 to the power of Y. So that is for experiment 3, divide by, uh, we're going to substitute all the values of experiment 1 into our rate law. So the same uh, the same concept, we're going to substitute it. K is not given to you. So what we're going to do, we're just going to write down K. No worries, we're going to cancel it out later on. So that's why it's fine if we don't have the value yet. So this is actually the um, the value itself. So right now we're gonna divide it and we can simplify it by cancel the one with the same uh the same one. So we're gonna cancel the key and we're gonna uh, cancel the concentration of Cl2. So that's why to find the order of NO we have to use the same Cl2 concentration so that we can simplify it. Okay, so I have simplified it. Now we're going to do the uh, calculation. So 4 is equal to 2x. So we know that from here we know that x is equal to 2. So this is quite straightforward. Um, but actually you can also use law for any value that is not as straightforward as this question. Kan? So how are we going to use the law? So I'm just going to show it. So 4 equal to 2x. Then log 4 is equal to x log 2. Hence x log 4 divided by log 2. We will get x is equal to 2. So either way, it's fine. You're going to get the same answer. Right? So we know that the order of reaction with respect to NO is uh, 2. So we have to write it down. The order of reaction of uh, NO is 2. Okay, so that is for our NO. So X2, we know the value is 2. Right now, we're going to look for Cl2. For the Cl2, how are we going to use it? Now we're going to find out. Okay, find order of Cl2, use the same concentration of NO. So, the same concentration of NO is experiment 1 and experiment 2. So, what I'm going to do is actually uh, divide these two value. So, the same one, experiment 2 divided by experiment 1. Uh, you're going to write down experiment 1 divided by experiment 2 point, it's fine. 
2 is equal to what we're going to do is I'm going to substitute all the value from experiment 2 into our weight law. So experiment 2 4.55 exponent negative 5 equal to k 0 0.0125 exponent uh, to the power of x 0 0.0514 to the power of y. So next is experiment 1. For experiment 1, uh, actually I have written down from the previous um, step scan. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to copy paste lah. Uh, kalau kamu, you have to write it down again. Uh, so the same one. Tapi from here, um, you're not going to cancel out the same one. You're going to look for the division itself. So contohnya from here, which one are going to cancel out? We're going to cancel out uh, by the division itself lah. Uh, is our key and the concentration of NO. So that's why to find Cl2, we're going to use the same concentration of NO. So that it will be simplified. So here, I have simplified, I have cancelled it out. So the value will be 2 is equal to 2 to the power of y. Okay, to the power of y. Hence, we get y is equal to 1. So we know that Cl2 is actually to the power of 1. But then we still have to write it down. The order of reaction with respect to Cl2 is actually 1. So that is the step to find out the order of the reaction. So when you 1 over 3 pun boleh, ini 1 over 2 pun boleh juga. Okay, you will get the same answer. Okay, but then the last one, we're going to substitute the order of the reaction into our rate law. Tadi x and y only kan? So what we're going to do now, so we have to mention NO is to the power of 2. So I'm going to write down to the power of 2. And Cl2 is to the power of 1. Uh, if you don't want to write it down, point, it's fine. So that is the answer for question A. So question B, the rate constant. So what is actually the rate constant? Rate constant is our K. So how we're going to do it? So from our rate law, we have find out the order of the reaction. So we're going to find out K by substituting the value uh, into each of our concentration and rate. So for example, if the rate you use for experiment 1, then make sure the concentration of NO and Cl2 pun from experiment 1. If you use it from experiment 2, all of the value must be from experiment 2. But right now, I'm going to use for um, experiment 1. Okay, so I'm just going to substitute it straight away. So masukkan sahaja, make sure all of it must be from the same experiment. Any experiment is fine, but it must be from the same one. Okay, so I'm just going to substitute, make sure uh, to the power of 2, include can to the power of 2, CL2 to the power of 1, based upon our order of reaction. So for the value itself, you will get 5.70. That is the value. But how about the unit? So unit for the rate constant must be included. So how are we going to find out? Okay, yang ini. Okay, remember, rate for this experiment is uh, molar per second. If the question give molar per day, you have to write molar per day lah. Okay, for the square bracket, is actually a concentration. Tapi for N only, day to the power of 2. So I'm just going to write now N to the power of 2 uh, times by M to the power of 1. Okay, so how we're going to find out the unit of K? So molar per second divided by here, molar jadi molar cube. So once more minus 3, you get M is actually uh, to the power of uh, 1 minus 3, M to the power of negative 2 per second. So that is the unit. So for the rate constant, we have to include the unit as well. Uh, so how to find out? Now we can going to go macam ni lah. Okay, so that's for experiment 1. So, exper uh, example 1, example 2 is the same one. I believe you could try it yourself. So, now let's look for example 3. So, for example 3, here it mentioned calculate the rate of reaction. Okay, what? Kenapa kena cari rate of reaction? Because from experiment, uh, example 1 and 2, rate is given. But from here, we don't have any rate. Okay, so kita kena lah find out the rate. So, how to find out the rate? Uh, that is from the first uh, page of our notes, rate is actually concentration divided by time. Okay, you know, concentration is given, the same goes for time. So, what we're going to do is actually we're going to divide, we're going to find out the value of each of the rate for uh, each experiment. So, from here, we get the value. So, here we get 1. So, we get 8.33 exponent negative 5. But then, make sure, uh, include the unit. Because concentration is molar, but time is minute. Minute because it is given the table to you. So, the molar per minute. 
Okay, so that is for experiment one. So you have to do for experiment two and experiment uh, three. Okay, so that is all the value for the rate of reaction for each experiment. So right now we're gonna do write the rate law. So how to write the rate law is k of our concentration of reactant. So in this case, rate is equal to k concentration of c to the power of x d to the power of y. Actually, x and y it could be a ke b ke c ke any uh any of our point is fine. Okay, so sekarang ni how to find out d or the fraction? Okay, again. If you're going to find out C, what we're going to do is actually use the same concentration of D uh, so that we can simplify it. Okay, so kita tengok uh, D, the same one is actually experiment 1 and experiment 3. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to divide the value from experiment 1 divide by experiment 3. So again, what we're going to do is actually we're going to substitute all the information um, all the information from the table into the uh, rate law. But remember, rate is actually from the one that we find out from E. Uh, concentration, semua kita find out daripada table. Okay, remember, but the rate eh, is not uh, change in concentration. We have to use all rate. Okay, so that's for experiment 1. Okay, and then we're going to use experiment 3, the same juga. Because remember, we're going to substitute into our rate law. Okay, we have to use from experiment E tu lah from our example E itself. Okay, so sebab itulah, when we find C, use the same D so that we can cancel it out. So, what we're going to have is actually here, we will get 2 is equal to 2x, 2 is equal to x. So, we get that x is equal to 1. Okay, so again, remember, we, have, we still have to write down the order of the reaction uh, with respect to C is actually uh, 1. Because with respect to C, it's actually the order of reaction of C is 1. Now, we're going to find out the D. So, how are we going to use it? Okay, to find the order of D, use the same concentration of C. Okay, so dalam kes ni, experiment 1 and experiment 2. So, I'm just going to write down, sebenarnya experiment 2 divided by 1, ataupun experiment 1 divided by 2, uh, any of it is fine. Okay, so from here, remember for the rate itself, uh, make sure you use from the uh, example A. Uh, it's not from the table. Okay, so I'm going to substitute all the values. We're going to simplify it. Okay, so once we simplify it, okay, so we get our value here is actually 4 to the power of y. Make sure it's actually to the power of y. So hence we get y is equal to 2. So again, we have to include the order of the reaction with respect to D. Uh, right now, we need D plus again. With respect to D, is actually 2. Okay. So once we have find out the order of reaction, we write the rate law and then include the number. Uh, include what is the value actually. So order of reaction of C is to the power of 1. Order of reaction with D is to the power of 2. So that is for example 3. Okay, example 4, I believe you try yourself. The same goes for F and 6. 